Well, it's been two and a half years since the release of Affinity Photo 2.0 back in October of 2022. And since that time, the most requested feature has been AI-based selection tools. Well, the long wait is over. Version 2.6 has been released and integrates just that. But is it any good? What are its pros and cons? That's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. Let's run through the new features. The first is Select Subject. Select Subject needs no introduction as it's been around for a long while. This tool utilizes machine learning to analyze an image and select what it considers to be the main subject. This feature was first introduced by Adobe Photoshop way back in October 2019 and was integrated in Pixelmator Pro in November 2021. Affinity Photo is really the last main compositing photo editor to add this feature. Better late than ever. To demonstrate, let's select the subject in this image. In years past, you would have no choice but to use a selection brush and perform tedious brushing as what I'm doing here. Well, now there is Select Subject. To use it, I'll click Select. I'll click Select Subject. As you can see, it works as advertised, whether it be a portrait, an animal, a vehicle, and others. The next new feature is object selection. To my mind, this is the far more impressive and useful update. While Photoshop has had this feature since late 2019, its other competitor, Pixelmator Pro, still has no object selection to this day. So Affinity has really overtaken it in this regard. To demonstrate, let's work on selecting each individual dog. Once again, previously, all you had available was a brush, not the fastest method available. Let's see how object selection can speed up this workflow. I'll click on the object selection tool. It will take a few seconds for the object selection tool to initialize. You will be able to tell it is active when an overlay appears. As you can see, as I hover my mouse over the dog, Affinity Photo automatically adds an overlay to give a preview of the object to be selected. A nice touch. As far as I'm aware, other competitors don't do this step. I'll click my mouse to confirm the selection. And just like that, the dog was selected with just one click. Let's do the rest. As an alternative, you can also drag a rectangle around the object, which allows for more targeted selections. Let's move on to another example. This time, let's make some local adjustments on this portrait. As you can see, using the previous point and click method doesn't really work well. As I move my cursor to different points, only the entire head is being selected and can't distinguish the smaller facial features. No problem. I'll use the drag a rectangle method for more precise targeting. As you can see, it works great. I'll brighten the eyes. Next, let's select the lips. There, the mouth is selected. However, let's perform an additional step of excluding the mouth opening for a more precise selection. To do that, I'll switch the selection mode to subtract. I'll drag the rectangle over the mouth's opening. Notice that the overlay turns red in subtract mode. There, a more precise lip selection. I'll add a saturation adjustment. Next, let's select the face. Once again, I'll drag a rectangle over the face. I'll brighten the face. And there's our edit, done with a much faster and more intuitive workflow than manual selections. So that is a summary of the new AI selection features. Next, let's run through some pros and cons. The first pro is it is free. Version 2.6 is a free update for all version 2 users, which is a big contrast to both Adobe and Capture One which are raising prices for already very expensive products. Bravo to Affinity. 
The second pro is its AI works locally. That means better privacy. No chance of your images being used for training without your knowledge. The third pro is it utilizes a small AI model. Unlike other products where the size of the models are in the gigabytes and take several minutes to download and occupy a ton of disk space, Affinity's machine learning file size is only around 300 megabytes, which won't tax your system too much. The fourth pro is it is fast and intuitive compared to other editors' AI selection tools, which might be laggy or hard to use. Affinities was pretty easy to understand and snappy, consistent with its other selection tools. So those were the pros. Next, let's move on to the cons. Unfortunately, in this first iteration, Affinities implementation did have some drawbacks, which we hope will be improved in the near future. The first con is poor select subject accuracy. While select subject is supposed to make a selection on the main subject of an image, Unfortunately, I found this current iteration to be pretty confused on what is supposed to be included in the main subject. You can see in this first example how it added persons, which clearly should not be part of the subject. Comparing with Photoshop, you can see its select subject didn't make the same type of mistake. In this second example, you can see how this time it excluded elements which should have been made part of the subject. And again, comparing with Photoshop, there was no error. And this is not just limited to portraits. Looking at this image of a car, it included background elements it shouldn't have. Moving on to the second con, the second con is it does not properly handle complex edges. This is by far the biggest problem with this implementation. And if you follow this channel, you know that complex edges such as those in hair or fur are the most problematic and time consuming aspect of the selection process. Therefore, it would be really great if you could have AI take care of this problem automatically in one step. Unfortunately, in this iteration, it is not the case. Affinity's AI didn't seem to have any method in place to handle complex edges. To demonstrate, let's use select subject to make a selection of this lady. There, the selection is done. And looking at the hair edges, you can see the lack of refinement when it comes to the gaps and fine details. You could of course fix this using the refine brush, but that would take a lot more time spent, which ideally should have been handled by AI in the first place. Comparing it with Adobe Photoshop, you can see how their tool just works, taking care of the hair edges in one click, which makes it far less time consuming and more effortless to use. Here's another example of Affinity's inaccurate and half-baked hair selection. And here is Photoshop performing the same task, a night and day difference. So there you have it. We've run through the new AI selection tools in Affinity Photo 2.6, where we've also discussed its pros and cons. So overall, is it any good? Definitely, as you've seen, both tools work well to help speed up a workflow. Whether we like it or not, AI is going to play a big part in the future of photo editing. And this update gives a solid foundation for Affinity's future. We only hope that it won't take another 2.5 years before this tool is improved and its problems addressed. But let me know what you think of this update. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share to help keep the videos coming until the next video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.